The Lion, the Mouse, and the Sleepy Bear Once upon a time, in a lush, green forest where the sun filtered through the trees, there lived a tiny but clever mouse. This little mouse was known far and wide among his animal friends for his quick thinking and ability to solve problems despite his small size. Not far from his cozy burrow was a massive cave, home to a gigantic bear. This bear, who had gone into hibernation months ago, was still deep in slumber, even though summer had arrived. The bear's snores echoed across the forest day and night, disturbing the peace of the forest. The snores were so loud that the little mouse couldn't sleep for months. His tiny home trembled with every bear snore, and the noise kept him tossing and turning every night. The mouse had had enough. One sunny morning, he scurried over to the bear's cave. Mr. Bear, he called out in his squeaky voice. Mr. Bear, wake up. Summer has come, and it's time to get up. But the bear didn't stir. He continued to sleep deeply, snoring even louder than before. The little mouse covered his ears in frustration. Determined to wake the bear, the mouse thought of a plan. He rushed back to his home and grabbed a bugle, a loud, brass instrument that he had found abandoned in the forest months ago. The mouse had never played the bugle before, but desperate times called for desperate measures. He climbed up onto a rock outside the bear's cave and, taking a deep breath, blew into the bugle with all his might. The sound rang through the forest like a trumpet call, echoing off the trees. Surely, the bear would wake up now. But to the mouse's dismay, the bear merely rolled over, scratched his belly, and continued to snore. Frustrated, the mouse sat on the rock, exhausted and defeated. Just then, several of his forest friends approached, noticing the troubled look on his face. A deer, a squirrel, and a bird all gathered around him. What's the matter, little mouse? asked the deer kindly. Oh, don't ask, the mouse sighed. I haven't slept all winter because of the bear's snoring. I've tried everything to wake him up, but nothing works. The squirrel scratched his head thoughtfully. Maybe the lion could help you, he suggested. The mouse's eyes widened in fear. The lion? Why would I go talk to him? He's terrifying. The lion was the king of the forest, known for his loud roars that could make even the strongest trees shake. But the mouse had always been too scared to approach him. Because, the bird chirped, the lion's roar is so loud that it could wake anyone. If anyone can wake the bear, it's the lion. Though the mouse was nervous, he knew he had no other choice. He needed to sleep, and the bear's snoring had to stop. Summoning all his courage, he made his way to the lion's den. As he approached, his heart pounded in his tiny chest. There, sleeping in front of his cave, was the lion, his mane shining in the sunlight. The mouse hesitated, his tiny legs trembling with fear. I can't do this, he whispered to himself, turning to leave. But as he did, he accidentally stepped on a dry twig. The snap of the twig echoed in the silence, and suddenly, the lion opened one eye, then the other. He stretched out his enormous paws and growled softly. What are you doing in front of my cave, little mouse? The lion growled, his voice deep and intimidating. The mouse gulped. Um, king of the forest, I'm so sorry to wake you, but I came to ask for your help. The lion laughed, a booming sound that echoed across the forest. Help? Why should I help a tiny creature like you? You're not even big enough to be a snack. The mouse, though trembling, stood his ground. Please, mighty lion, I need your help to wake up the bear in the cave next to my home. His snoring has kept me awake for months, and nothing I do seems to work. But one roar from you, and I know he'll wake up. The lion yawned and stretched lazily. I am the king of the forest, he said. I don't have time to waste on such a small problem. With that, the lion turned and walked deeper into his cave. The mouse, heartbroken and disappointed, began to trudge back to his home. But before he got far, he heard a strange sound, like rustling leaves and scratching. Curious, the mouse followed the sound and saw the lion hidden behind a large tree, scratching his body furiously. The lion was itching all over, rubbing his back against the tree, trying to stop the unbearable itch. His powerful paws scratched at his mane, and his tail swatted wildly. The mighty king of the forest looked ridiculous. 
What's wrong with you, Mr. Lion? The mouse asked, cautiously approaching the lion. The lion stopped scratching for a moment, embarrassed to be caught in such a silly state. I don't know, little mouse, he said. I can't stop itching, and it's driving me crazy. The mouse, being small but clever, took a closer look and saw the problem immediately. Mr. Lion, you have fleas. That's why you're itching so much. Fleas? The lion roared, horrified. How can a king like me have fleas? Don't worry, the mouse said confidently. I can help you get rid of them. The lion looked skeptical. You? A tiny mouse? How could you possibly help me? But the mouse was determined. He climbed up onto the lion's back and began working his way through the thick fur, carefully picking out the fleas one by one. The lion, although initially irritated, soon realized that the itching was starting to ease. But just as the mouse was making progress, the lion's itch became unbearable again. He started rubbing against the tree harder and faster, almost crushing the poor mouse in the process. Mr. Lion, stop. I'm almost done, the mouse squeaked, barely holding on. Desperate to stop the itch, the lion ran to a nearby lake and jumped into the water. The mouse clung to his fur for dear life as the lion splashed around. Mr. Lion, Get out of the water, or I'll drown, the mouse cried. The lion, soaked and still itching, climbed out of the lake and shook himself dry, sending water and fleas flying in all directions. The mouse held on tightly until the lion finally stopped. I think I've got them all, the mouse said, as he plucked the last flea from the lion's mane. The lion sighed in relief. It's like the itching is completely gone. He looked at the mouse with gratitude. I must admit... I didn't expect you to help me like this, little mouse. I'm sorry for looking down on you earlier. The mouse smiled. That's all right, Mr. Lion. Sometimes, the smallest creatures can make the biggest difference. Feeling thankful and indebted to the mouse, the lion said, Hop on my back, little friend. Let me take you home. When they arrived near the mouse's home, the loud snoring of the bear filled the air once again. Huh. What's that noise? The lion asked. That's the bear, the mouse replied. Summer has come, but he's still sleeping. The lion, feeling stronger and grateful for the mouse's help, took a deep breath. With a mighty roar, he bellowed into the bear's cave. The ground shook, and the trees swayed with the force of his roar. Suddenly, the bear's eyes flew open, and he stumbled out of the cave in a daze. What's happening? Is it summer? Why is everyone awake? The bear muttered, looking around confused. All the animals in the forest burst into laughter at the bear's silly reaction. The little mouse laughed the loudest, finally relieved that the snoring was over. The lion, the mouse, and all their friends celebrated as peace returned to the forest.